Now let's see the clinical technique for class 3 direct composite. Class 3, we know it's in the acidic zone. They are done on the proximal surface of anterior teeth, not involving the incisal angle. So, first of all, anesthesia is necessary for the patient comfort, decreased salivary flow, occlusal assessments. Composite shade should be selected as we know before the tooth dehydrates and using a composite shade guide. So, depending upon the extent of preparation to be restored, it can be conventional, barrel conventional or modified technique. Conventional preparation, cavity preparation is done using a wrong birth from the lingual approach. The cutting instrument is directed perpendicular to the enamel surface. Initial opening is made close to the adjacent tooth. So, tooth preparation for class 3 direct composite restoration will involve obtaining access to the defects, to caries or fracture, then removing faulty structure, using caries, defective dentine, defective restoration, creating convenience form for the restoration, and restoring the proximal lesion using a lingual approach, it comes with some advantage. Lingual approach, the facial enamel is conserved for enhanced aesthetic. Shade matching on the composite is less critical with the lingual approach. Discoloration or deterioration of the restoration is less visible. For a facial approach, you go when case lesion is positioned more facially. Teeth are irregularly aligned and facial access will significantly conserve the tooth structure. Or this extensive case lesion extend onto the facial surface or a faulty restoration that originally was placed from the facial approach need to be replaced. For the lingual approach of the class 3 to preparation, firstly you are holding the burr perpendicular to the enamel surface and initial opening made close to the adjacent tooth at the incisor gingival level of caries. Contact angle of the entry is parallel to the enamel rods and major lingual angle of the tooth. Incorrect entry over extends the lingual outline. Now, class 3 preparation for lesion entirely on the root surface. So, the preparation outline extends gingivally on the root surface. The gingiva flow should form a cavo surface margin of 90 degree and the depth of gingiva exit line angle should be not more than 0.75 mm at this initial stage of tooth preparation. The external wall are prepared perpendicular to the root surface in this area of the tooth, apical of the cemento enamel junction. The external walls are composed entirely of the dentine and cementum. Now, you can see here. The final tooth preparation step for class 3 direct composite, selective removal of carious dentine round birds, pulp protection if required, bevel placement on accessible enamel margin. The bevel is prepared by creating a 45 degree angle to the external surface with a width of 0.5 to 2 millimeter, depending upon size of preparation. The location of margin and aesthetic requirement of the restoration area when remaining enamel thickness is less, bevel is not given. Instead, 90 degree cable surface margin remains in dentine. If the old material you are removing is amalgam, the color will negatively affect the color of new restoration. Radiographs have to be taken. Tooth pulp should be symptomatic. So, you use the RMGI base only when the remaining dentine thickness is just to be less than 1.5 mm and the deepest portion of the preparation. Calcium hydroxide liners are used when case of remaining dentine thickness is 0.5 mm or less as an indirect pulp capping agent or in case of pulp exposure, MTA can also be used as a direct pulp capping if used. Calcium hydroxide MTA liner should always be covered with the RMGI base. When replacing a large restoration or restoring a large class 3 lesion, the operator may decide the retention form should be enhanced by placing the grooves at the gingival or cove at the incisal retention features. Now, let's see the restorative technique here. So, you're using the matrix application, the Mahler matrix material. This looks like a transparent strip at least 1 millimeter beyond the prepared tooth margin. A wedge is needed at the gingival margin on the gingival incisal. Hold the malar matrix in position and provide slight separation of the teeth and prevent a gingival overhang of the composite. Replace the adhesive, insert and light activate the composite, contour and polish the composite. Finishing, flame shade finishing burr, removing axis and contouring, rubber polishing points or aluminum oxide polishing points. The clinical technique for direct class 4 direct composite. So, class 4 which involves the incisal angle. It involves four or more surfaces of the tooth. For example, MIBL that is mesio incisal buccolingual or disto incisal buccolingual. So, restoration of these class 4 lesion require close attention to shading and contour of the remaining natural tooth. So, there are two situations which give rise to class 4 lesion. Extension of class 3 or in a case of a trauma. So, tooth preparation here in class 4 remains similar to class 3 preparation. The tooth preparation for class 4 direct composite restoration involve creating access to the defective structure like to the lesion, to the fracture, removing faulty structure and creating a convenience form for the restoration. In case of large defects, 
The tooth preparation for a large incisive proximal area requires more attention to retention form than that for a small class 4 defect. If a large amount of tooth structure is missing and restoration is in high occlusal stress area, groove retention form may be indicated. Also, enamel bevels can be increased in width to provide greater surface area for etching and a stronger bond between the composite and the tooth. Minor defect, the treatment of teeth with minor coronal fracture require minimal preparation. The fracture is only in the enamel. Adequate retention usually can be attained by simply beveling the shape, sharp cable surface margin in the fractured area by using a flame-shaped diamond burr followed by bonding. Outline form. Start with a round carbide burr or the diamond instrument of appropriate size at high speed with air water coolant. Final tooth preparation for class 4 tooth preparation are indicated when there is a selective carious tissue removal, pulp protection if required, bevel placement on accessible enamel margin and doing the final procedure for cleaning and polishing. Beveling given by 45 degree flame shaped or round diamond instrument, 0.5 to, point to 0.5 to 2 millimeter bevel depending upon the amount of tooth structure missing and the retention perceived necessary, a scalloped non-linear bevel sometimes help in masking the restoration margin. Large preparation may require undercut, groove, dovetail extension or combination of these. A gingival retention groove is prepared using number 1 fourth round burr, 0.2 mm inside the DJ at a depth of 0.25 millimeter, half the diameter number 1 fourth round burr, and the length of gingiva flows slightly up the facioaxial and linguaxial line angle. No retentive undercut is usually needed at the incisal area. Again, you are applying the matrix band, mylar strips. The position of lingual line angle helps reduce the potential under contouring. Then a custom lingual matrix can also be used for large class 4 preparation. Then application of adhesive insertion and light activation of the composite. Increment should be less than 2 mm thick. Develop the lingual surface or restoration first, then its body and finally the facial surface. Anatomic incremental layering is uh, desired here. When using a properly contoured mylar matrix, care must be taken when closing the matrix not to pull with the excessive forces. Finally, you finish and polish the composite. Now, clinical technique for class 5 direct composite restoration. They are located in the gingival one third, the class 5. Same initial procedure, concentration presented. Let us talk about class 5. So, clinical technique for class 5 direct composite restoration. Class 5 preparation by definition as we know, they are located in the gingival one third of the facial and the lingual tooth surface. So, initial clinical procedure, the same initial procedure concentration presented for class 3 restoration apply for class 5 as well. Expect for, except for the occlusal evaluation which is not required for class 5. During stage selection, it should be noted that the tooth is typically darker and more opaque in cervical one third. Using isolation by a rubber dam and number 212 retainer or with a cotton roll and the retraction cords. Let us see what is the tooth preparation of class 5 for direct fill composite for small to moderate lesion that do not extend onto the root surface. Conservative preparation result in diversion walls, non-uniform depth. Small or moderate class 5 tooth preparation are ideal for small enamel defect or small primary carious lesion. Initial tooth preparation you can use a round diamond or carbide burr eliminating the entire enamel lesion or the defect and you have to, no efforts is made to prepare 90 degree cable surface margins. After preparation of cavitated lesion, the margin of the preparation is extended to include the area of decalcification. You use a round diamond burr to prepare the cable surface margin in the form of a chamfer. The tooth preparation for class 5 usually require only surface debridement of any exposed dentine and roughening beveling all the cave enamel margin with a diamond instrument only because of abraded or eroded lesion but the lesion which is non carious cervically. But if you have a class 5 preparation for large lesion or defect that extend onto the root surface, class 5 preparation large one exhibit a 90 degree cable surface margin that subsequently can be beveled when in enamel and an axial wall that may or may not be uniform in depth. The axial depth in the dentine is determined by selective removal of carious tissue. You are using a tapered fissure carbide burn number 271. A similarly shaped diamond is used at a high speed with the air water spray. Remove the remaining carious dentine. Apply a base only if required. Bevel the enamel margin and adding the groove retention if indicated using a flame shaped or a round diamond instrument. Clear pre-contoured class 5 matrix materials are available. Placement of adhesive, insertion and light cure of the composite.
an incremental placement technique as we have. Let's see what is the technique we have for GI. Glass anomer, it is, let's see what is the clinical technique for the GI restoration. GI possess the favorable quality of releasing the fluoride. We know that when exposed to the old environment. The restoration of carrier's lesion on the root of the patient with active caries is the primary indication of using a GI as a restorative material. Because they have a limited strength, less wear resistance, glass anomer indicated generally for the restoration of low stress area. Not for typical class 1, class 2 or class 4 where case activity potential is a significant concern. In indication, in addition to being indicated for the root surface carriers lesion in class 5, slot like preparation in class 2 or class 3 cervical location not involving the proximal contact may be restored using GI. Cervical defect of idiopathic erosion or abrasion origin may be indicated for restoration for GI if aesthetic demand is not that critical. The most conventional GI require mild dentine conditioning to remove the smear layer first. That will affect improved adhesion of glass anomer to the dentine. To condition our dentine, we are using a mild acid like 10% polyacrylic acid is applied to the preparation according to manufacturer instruction followed by rinsing and removal of excess water leaving dentine slightly moist. Some modified GI may have a substantial resin component and require a special primer to facilitate the bonding. We have encapsulated GI for trituration, mixing or paste based materials which are preferred to powder liquid. GI is placed in the preparation slight axis and quickly shaped with a composite instrument. Clear plastic cervical matrices can be used. If you are using a conventional GI, a thin coat of light activated resin based coating is placed on the surface immediately after placement to limit dehydration resultant disintegration of the restoration. Newer GI may be more resistant to dehydration. GIC and RMGI finished and polished immediately after light or complete activation. Gross excess can be shaved using number 12 surgical blade. If rotary instrument is needed, care must be taken not to dehydrate the surface of restoration. Also flexible abrasive disc used with a lubricant. A fine grit aluminium oxide polishing placed applied with a profi cup is used to impart a smooth surface. Now let's see what are the common problems we can have with the composite restoration. You can see a white line adjacent to enamel margin of a direct composite. It is usually due to a micro separation space that is created between the composite and tooth or a micro fracture. You can see inadequate etching and bonding of the affected area, traumatic finishing technique. Using a traumatic finishing technique, proper polymerization technique can reduce the chances of white line adjacent to enamel margin. Voids can be created as another problem. Spaces left between the increment during insertion, lamination defect, adherence of composite to hand instrument during placement. Use a more careful restorative technique to avoid the voids from happening. You can also have weak or missing proximal contacts like in class 2, 3 or 4 due to inadequate matrix band contouring, inadequate wedging, matrix band movement during the composite insertion. A circumferential matrix being used when restoring only one contact or matrix bank being too thick. So to prevent this from happening, you should contour the matrix material properly, have the matrix in contact with the adjacent tooth, use adequate pre-operative and insertion wedging technique and use a matrix system that places the matrix only around the proximal surface to be restored and be careful with the insertion technique. Another issue with the composite can be inaccurate shade that can be due to inappropriate appropriately Lighting is not proper in the operatory or selection of shade after the tooth has been dehydrated, wrong shade being used or your shade tap which is not matching the actual composite shade. The potential solution is using the natural light when selecting the shade if possible. Select the shade before isolating the tooth before the tooth get dehydrated. Do not shine the operator light directly on the area during the shade selection and place some of the selected shade on the tooth and cure pre-operatively to verify the shade selection. The last problem we can have is with the contouring and finishing problem with inadequate anatomic tooth form, improper selection of finishing instrument, improper composite placement. So have a proper matrix with appropriate axial line angle contour that will prevent this. Create embrasures to match the adjacent tooth embrasure form. Remember the outline form, use a properly shaped finishing instrument and do not use rotary instrument that can leave the roughened surfaces while contouring and finishing. One more important problem is actually the post-op sensitivity that can happen with the composite. If you have aggressive tooth preparation, 
incorrect use of bonding system, not using a liner or base when it is indicated, formation of micro gaps secondary to excessive polymerization shrinkage due to high C factor or aggressive finishing of the restoration. So potential solutions include using careful tooth preparation, using liner bases properly, using adhesive system properly, using a desensitizer solution, inserting and polymerizing the composite material properly and finishing the composite restoration.